Okay. Hi, everyone. Elena here. And I am back after a little bit of a delay. I donated a kidney a couple of weeks ago here and it kicked my butt. So I had to honor that and take some downtime and so happy to be back today with Lucinda Ray. And let me tell you about this powerhouse. She is so amazing, so beautiful inside and out. And she just released her newest book called Holy Hot Visibility. I get those two mixed up. I'm a little dyslexic sometimes. <laughs> Holy Hot Visibility. Mm. And the I got to be a early reader and it is amazing because she is really helping people look at balancing between being introverted and being visible with their brand, with their business, with the message that they're trying to get out to the world. She, I first met her through her artwork, which is just mind blowing. So please follow her and check out her art as well. And she's really tapped into her soulful and spiritual side, which then means that that's who she attracts. So she is working with those beautiful women who are in a soulful spiritual business. And so welcome today. Thanks for being here. Thank you. A lovely intro. Well, I know. In. It's so nice to hear <laughs> lovely things about ourselves. Um, you know, it just is because I think sometimes we don't acknowledge just how amazing we are. And I try really hard to do that for people when I, even if it's just an out and about thing, I will notice what I like about them, whether it's their energy mm -hmm. or an appearance thing, but it always comes from the heart because I love when people are expressing themselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, in their truly authentic way. So yeah. Totally. So beautiful. And can we all just give like a round of applause and a big heart hug to you for <laughs> what you've just been through? I mean, you're truly like a hero. Thank and you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What it's, it's one of those things where I've always, downplayed things. And, you know, I was raised Catholic. And so a big part of that is being, you know, you're taught to be humble and not brag and, you know, all of those things. And I think that that's legitimate. Like we don't need to be over the top, but also sometimes we need to acknowledge when we've done big things, just like we were talking about with the business, like, yeah, this was kind of a big deal that I gave up an organ <laughs> for somebody else. <laughs> Life changing. Yeah. 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 In my, oh. um, surgery and then recovery manifestation list, I put in there, you know, giving a kidney for life and health. And it's true. Like I gave that up. So somebody else, my dad can have, you know, a better life and better health. So yeah, it's a pretty, cool that was in your manifestation in. list. Like you had that in like a bucket list kind of thing. <clears throat> no. So, oh. um, I, when I did, uh, so, you know, with my clinical hypnotherapy background, I do positive suggestion lists. And mm. so I'll call it like, you know, I don't like the calling it positive suggestion on my thing. So I'll say manifestation list. So I made a surgery one and then I made a recovery one where I spelled out how I wanted the surgery to go, how I wanted mm. recovery to go, that kind of a thing. So excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Got it. So enough about like me. A goal of yours. I'm oh, like, no, no. Wow, no. <laughs> Never heard of that. <laughs> no, although there do seem to be people out there that end up giving a piece of their liver. Um, they've done bone marrow. They've done yeah. egg donor. So there's lots of ways to be very altruistic with our bodies, even blood, yeah. <laughs> plasma, apheresis. There's right. lots of ways. So. That's wild, right? <laughs> it it's is wild. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, thank you. But enough about me. We're going to talk about you today. <laughs> Let's talk about you. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because I have clients that are masters at flipping the script and just saying or asking questions. And then it gets, you know, then I'll, and I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing that today. This, this session is for you. This is not <laughs> about I'll be me. Quiet. I'll sit on my yeah. hands. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's a back and forth conversation. It's all good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So tell me about kind of just what got you into that artistic world. Have you always been that more creative person? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd love to hear mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, since I was a little kid, like mm -hmm. probably like I feel like it was around 
five or six, even maybe, um, you know, like when you're thinking about what you want to be when you grow up, it was artist for sure. And then at some point it was like, oh, I want to be an author too, like an author mm-hmm. artist. And I still fantasize like one day I'm just going to be an author artist, you know, and I, I went to school to do the graphic design thing because mm-hmm. I, you know, needed to do the career that made the money. Yeah. And there's of course the artist in there, but yeah, like I'm an artist at heart just through and through. Mm-hmm. So forever. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, forever. And it's so fascinating to me because I am definitely not artistic. I am not creative in mm-hmm. that visual way. Mm -hmm. And so it fascinates me so much to be around people whose brains work in that way and see nuanced colors. And Mm -hmm. it it is just a different way of viewing the world. And it is Mm -hmm. so fascinating to me as somebody who kind of is a, not a brain expert, but, you know, I am helping people with their brains in like their thought process and how they see the world belief wise, but you're coming into it and seeing the world color wise, mm. um, pattern wise, how do these colors go together? How does it amplify mm. who you are as a person? So I just, it really fascinates me. So yeah. T- mm. Could you talk a little bit about that and how do you notice that you see the world in a different way than other people? Oh, I love this question. Talk about a creative question. I'm just saying you're creative. <laughs> Maybe not in the visual way, but um, we're all creative. We all were, you know, I'm not going to riff on that right now, but we yeah. all just want to say we all have a creative spark. Absolutely. We lost it at some mm-hmm. point, let's bring it back, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. But I love the question about like how I see the world. I, um, I went through this deep color theory, you know, it was like color theory three or something in, in college. And I was, and uh, Judy Rogers was my art teacher. Um pretty sure she's on the other side by now. She was pretty up there in her years back 20 years ago. Anyway, she like something happened where I left the class and like, I could see what colors the sunset was mixed in. And I could see like what the creator made the horizon. And I just, it was almost a psychedelic experience. Yeah. I was just going to say, that sounds a lot like being on mushrooms. (laughs) (laughs) I was not on mushrooms. (laughs) But I felt like I was, <laughs> not that I know. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it was like this, oh my gosh, I could just, everything merged into color. Like, mm. and it's really like my favorite language. I mean, one of my favorite languages, color. Um, so I like live and breathe color. And I think, you know, I'm so in gratitude for my eyes so that I can perceive it. Mm-hmm. It's like, I almost taste it. And I just, mm. so it's like, I almost, there's some points in my life where I walked around, I'm like, oh, I'm just like, it's a color. I don't know how to describe it. I've never really put it into articulate words, but it's like, um, I don't see the shapes. Everything is just so, so there's definitely this depth and this richness and aliveness in the language of color psychology. Mm -hmm. And of course I get to do that with people's brands and their personalities and their core values, like translate into these certain color frequencies and combinations. Love that. You know, and what just kind of hit me with that, where, because I really think like, you know, psilocybin psychedelics, (laughs) not that we're going to go down that path, but it really does just allow us to get out of our own way and Mm -hmm. get into that more flowy spiritual side of ourselves, because I actually am really fascinated in studying psychedelics and what it does to our brain. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like, that's what you experienced. You had a spiritual experience with color Mm -hmm. because you were somehow more in that flow state coming out of that particular class. And it all just like clicked in that moment. And that's so interesting. Wow. Yeah. Flow state. I love that you say that because I lately as I've been, well, probably always, I get totally lost in my art and Mm -hmm. pretty sure it's the flow state. I perceive it as like, I'm going so far into my right brain. Like I have to climb my way out to, you know, find the light again. But I think it is like a flow state where I'm just lost in that Mm -hmm. like yummy. um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just in trance and like time has no relevancy. It's just healing happens. You know, I'm just immersed in this. This is my painting. Like lately Mm -hmm. I've been oil painting. I don't watch Netflix. I say, I just go paint, you know, I create things. I have to like always be creating things. 
manifesting generator type. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And, and that's, that's kind of how hypnosis is where, you know, and I think it happens in prayer, you know, like you're in church or you're out of nature or you're in meditation. We do, we lose track of time. Um, even in hypnosis, I'll ask people like, how long do you think it's been? And they're like, yeah, I don't know, like 15 minutes. And it's been like 45 minutes because there's just no sense of time. Wow. And so I think what you said about us all needing to get into our creative states is, is true. And that creativity just looks different for different people. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Um, so with the, the colors, um, I want to talk a little bit about that more because when we were repainting our house, mm -hmm. I was wanted grays, but I wanted like a blue gray in the bedroom and a purple gray in the living room. And my husband was like, I don't know what you're talking about. These are all gray. <laughs> there we go. I was like, no, this is purple gray. This is blue gray. So is there something? So then I kind of started reading on that. Is there something too where women tend to see more nuances and colors? Was that something you studied? I don't remember studying that, but I feel like I read that as well. Yeah. Like uh, I'm going to, yeah, I don't have statistics. No, that's okay. No, that's I'd okay. Like, I'd just... like to have that in my little docket, my little, yeah. little docket that, I was at, you know, like at a party, we can talk about this or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember like it was, um, I can't remember if it was red or blue or I think it's blue, but like, I can see like all these different indigos mm -hmm. and my husband like is like, that's blue. I'm like, no, it's a, it's a violet, blue, violet, or it's a blue, violet, blue, you know, and yeah. it's just so many nuances and I don't know if because women have the ability of their brains and you would know this maybe more than I do, but we can multitask. So we're able to mm -hmm. like see those nuances or those multi dimensions or something. Yeah. Different. I don't know. It's, yeah. It's, it's I'm the olfactory or whatever that word is for eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the smell, the what is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that. It's Optometry. fine. Optometry. Yeah. I just sound <sighs> smart and I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's all good. Um, so when you paint, how do you, are you look, are you doing it through color? Are you doing it through feel or kind of like, what's your process with doing your pictures and your creations? A lot of times it's literally based on a color palette. Mm. So sometimes I'll, you know, like I'll be drawn to, um, like I, I try to dress like this. I, I'm not as good lately as a busy mom and mm. entrepreneur. I just put on whatever's clean in my closet, but I, I used to dress like for the color of the day. So I similarly paint like, oh, I'm really into indigo and red right now. So I want to make a color scheme kind of around those colors. Recently, I challenged myself with those neutral palettes, like mm -hmm. all of the grays, you know, which are really neutral versions of these other colors. And uh, so yeah, re color is really a kind of a lead in everything I do. Like yeah. really branding design and my paintings. So, I mean, I have different processes. Sometimes I'll look at something and, and paint it. I'll create like a, um, you call it a, I'm forgetting the word right now. Oh my gosh. It's like a, what's that thing called? It's like a, a piece of paper with your image that you create on it, whether it's like a stock art or something or a portrait of someone, mm -hmm. a printed uh, cougar or whatever. Yeah. And there's a word for it that I'm totally spacing out right now. So it's sorry. Okay. So, I was telling you before we started how not much my brain is not working these days. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> I've had like a week of sleep deprivation, like, like five in the morning. Yeah. My puppy wakes up at three. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. Um, so you, sometimes I look at an image and sometimes I just get these eyes. Like, so this is one thing since I was a little girl, I got these like eyes and I, I like started perceiving them, like their eyes of the divine feminine, whatever that means. Their eyes of like creation coming through as women's eyes. You know, I liked putting eyelashes on. I like putting the little window reflections and mm -hmm. I would draw eyes as a kid. And then I've done a lot of portraiture work, but a lot of times I would create those. So those are create from thin air with no, um, sample. I totally am forgetting the words. I'll forget it right after we're done with this. And it's just, they just come from a blank canvas into reality. And it's sort of like an archetypal energy that I'm needing to embody. Like I knew it as like a deity or a saint or a something rather. And then I would somehow, somehow I would merge with this energy and I mm -hmm. would 
it would like become part of me. It was weird. Like I had to paint this vision and then it would like, I would take it in. And now I'm kind of painting yeah. over some of those older pieces. Cause I'm like, ah, eh, these aren't very good. You know, my style and I'm doing oil now and I can, so it's just interesting to, um, that was a long winded answer, but no, I like it. I mean, obviously this is a long form, <laughs> so <laughs> long winded is good. Um, so I like that. So you were kind of talking about that transitions perfectly into my next question, where you were talking about when you meet with clients for branding, you're mm -hmm. translating their personality, their values into colors and a certain feel in the photography and mm -hmm. the artwork and those kinds of things. So how does that look? We were talking about that a little bit in class the other day. And so um, what's my, the what's the archetype? Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the transformation. So mm -hmm. could you talk like kind of give an example of how that mm -hmm. translates? Because obviously most of my listeners are heart-based, spirit-based people. So I think they're showing up in the world to create change, which is obviously alchemy. So what does that visually show up as for mm. you when somebody shows up with that archetype? Love this question. Yeah. Yeah, it's great questions, girl. Um alchemists can be so the thing is you have a brand archetype. It doesn't mean you have like it means there's um a variety of colors that are within a vibration, if you will. It's interesting to articulate this. Like mm -hmm. what's mine, it's a feeling thing. Mm -hmm. And alchemist often is gold because gold is shimmery. It's like, obviously alchemy is turning lead into gold. So there's that metaphor and archetypes are really like these, you know, in the subconscious, unconscious stories, I'm not to go on off on archetypes, but no, I was going to say, we should probably define archetypes because I'm yeah. making an assumption people know that, but that's probably not a common phrase. So yeah, right. if you want to define archetypes, we can start okay. there. Yeah. Sure. So like it's a Jung, Jung, I, Carl Jung, I think talked a lot about archetypes where it's a universal story based on a core value. So there's like, um, so let's start with alchemists. So the story of the alchemist is like turning lead into gold, right? There's mm -hmm. these stories we think of, like we think of Rapunzel and there was a transformation that happened when I don't even remember the story right now. It was like the hair, the straw, the hair. The hair. Yeah. And then <laughs> anyway, when it got cut. That it, example. Yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> I think of uh, like Mickey Mouse, uh, Fantasia and the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Mm -hmm. Remember when? And I, I use this example when it's the negative aspect of a brand archetype. Like usually I talk about the strengths, but like the negative aspect would be when Mickey used all that transformational power. And if you remember the brooms were like mopping and mm -hmm. cleaning up the castle and then suddenly the brooms got out of hand you know, because he misused his power or whatever. So it's that, anyway, I'm riffing on something else, but there's like strengths and there's weaknesses and there's these stories throughout time that talk about these archetypes. So they're like these kind of dreamy story-like energies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will relate to a, um, you know, like in the card deck I did with Sunny, there's all this ascended masters or whatnot. Mm -hmm. People will hold one of those and know it as like an archetype but in brand archetypes like pepsi and coke have a brand archetype let's just make this really tangible mm -hmm. coke is the innocent i mean you can call them innocent or not but mm -hmm. coke is the innocent so they're all about nostalgia and going back to simpler times mm -hmm. and the kind of classic 50s script yeah glass remember, bottles like, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the warm fuzzy polar bears in the 80s or 90s mm -hmm. whatever that was like it was kind of cute and warm so it's happiness is the happiness and innocent of, of the innocent is like creating happiness is the innocent. So people that are drawn to that as their core value will gravitate towards Coke. And I use these examples because they're both like sugary brown soda, right? Mm -hmm. And Pepsi is the jester. So it's like they could mm -hmm. change their logo and they had great sales. But when Coke tried to change their logo, like in the nineties, they had they, their sales went down because people wanted predictability from Coke's brand archetype. Pepsi, on the other hand, could like mix it up, be more spontaneous because that's Jester's core values. Hmm. So that's like a differentiation. So you can see the two and how people gravitate. So most of my clients are have alchemists in one of their top three because they're kind of, they're drawn to me speaking, talking about transformation, spirituality, all the, you know, a lot of my web designs are very luminous because there's something going on. So back to your original question with 
um, color. Is that clear with the brand archetypes? Yeah, I think so. And so we have Alchemist. What are the other ones? Oh gosh. I know that's what I was <laughs> like, should I pull list. out my book to, to get it I out? I can try and have it. Yeah. Well, so, so there's 12 main ones for brand archetypes. There's, I'll, I'll try to do it. We'll see. Brand, uh, Alchemist, lover, creator, jester, rebel, hero, caregiver. Um, now I'm getting lost. Explorer, sage, ruler, uh, every woman, every man. Oh, and there's one more. I got all 12 of them. Um, oh that was so close. That's amazing. Ah. <laughs> I'm driving of course, I, of course I only have one. Um, that's okay. So, I mean, yeah, that gives people an idea because I, I yeah. do think that most people aren't familiar with that. And mm -hmm. I like that you use Pepsi and Coke because obviously those are brands that we're familiar with. And we do, yeah. I, there is a different feeling between those two campaigns. So I think most people can relate to that. But mm -hmm. when we start to go into things like, oh, that there's actually an underlying message or theme behind that. Mm -hmm. And like, that was just like, oh yeah, Coke is nostalgic and Mm -hmm. Pepsi is like, oh, in your face, you know, so right. I had never really thought that. And so much of marketing is subconscious mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they pay people big bucks to access our brains in a way that resonates with us and that we're not consciously aware of. So, right. Right. um, and archetypes are kind of that un under layer. Yeah. Thing that, yeah. Right which I'm obviously as a hypnotherapist, I'm all about the subconscious and unconscious totally. and all of yeah. that stuff, because I want to bring that to light so that people do make more conscious choices wow. in, in where they spend their money or put their energy and time. But there mm -hmm. is that piece of it. You know, I often, um, I do expos and so people will come by and they'll say like, okay, I'm going to kind of, you know, work my work the room I was like absolutely go and kind of feel the energy of each person before you decide where to get a reading or who to connect with or whose email list to sign up with mm -hmm. so there is that feel yeah. to people that we have to translate into our brand and colors and everything so right. um right. kind of a little side trail to kind of come back to Everybody yeah. has an archetype. We just might not be consciously aware of what mm -hmm. we're portraying to the world. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 And the core value is the, really the values, the mm -hmm. archetype is like an expression of the values. So an archetype is like, you can almost see it like as an ally or um, sometimes I ask people to actually meditate with their archetypes. So mm -hmm. like, what does the alchemist feel like to you? Or what is the common? And then it's really juicy when you get to combine alchemist with like lover and then that like for me, I'm alchemist lover creator, that splash of creativity and innovation. And so an alchemist and a rebel is very different energy than an mm -hmm. alchemist and a caregiver, you know, if yeah. you can imagine. Absolutely. Um, so it's, I love it. When I work with my branding clients, I do like the three combination and we bring that into their expression of their brand and website. So yeah. Okay. Fun. Awesome. Yeah. Cause I think I'm Sorry, I'm like flipping through. Hopefully it's not too noisy, but um, nope, not at all. The, um, I know I'm alchemist and then I think um, caregiver. I was going to say. And is there creator? Is that one too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think those are my top three. Nice. So yeah. So that is a different feel than if it yeah. was like rebel or, you know, there's just a different, yeah. And your values are different and how you're trying to transform the world. So you were mm -hmm. starting to explain about alchemists and what that would look like oh, in yeah. colors or mm -hmm. branding. Yeah. So, so you mentioned values. So what would be the values of alchemists? How do you break that down and then translate mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So um, the main value, I just stick with the main kind of for each of them and then combine the main values is transformation. It's mm -hmm. being a catalyst. It's making change. Like you said, it's, and really like in all of our spiritual hearts, those of us that relate as being spiritual, you know, like we're continually evolving. We're continually literally like alchemizing ourselves, if you will, like yeah. through personal development and whatnot and whatever facet of spirituality, you know, you're, you're wanting to feel that like evolution and that transcendence or 
I don't know. I don't want to get into de descendant or transcendent spirituality mm -hmm. talk, but yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's moving through something. Some people are transcending, some people are descending and it's, it's moving through that energy. And so alchemist um, is okay. If I finish the color thing with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. gold is one representation because of the obvious led into gold thing, but it, it's also about like showing something's happening. How do you do that in your visuals? So I like, there's a lot of light and luminosity in my brands. Like, so it feels like movement is almost happy and they're almost animated feeling mm. or I used to do a lot of fairy dust and sparkles. That's not so much a thing anymore, but mm. a lot of my clients wanted like the sparkles across them. Absolutely. Some Cause it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's fairy dust still. Yeah. Does it. But like glitter, you know, it looks like mm -hmm. it's movement or, you know, it's that place of, it's also like the mystery of the cosmos. And so it kind of feels like stars. And then like, there's other ways of looking at it, like indigo into red and kind of mixing mm. to purple. That's like another psychological way of, blending the colors so it's showing that but there's also like uh not to riff too much on color but there's just the energy the emotional psychology behind the archetype or the the values that translate into color it's just a fascinating mm -hmm. also you know psychology and emotion based yeah and, well and, and i think like, that, yeah sorry. i think it's applicable though to real life because i know um working in mental health too they will talk about you know, hospitals are painted certain colors. Mm -hmm. um, other places are th where they want healing, where they want rest, where they want, you know, so there is true depth to painting a room a certain color. You know, you don't really necessarily want your bedroom to be some vibrant, lively, because the idea of the bedroom is rest, relax, yeah. reset. So I think that is actually important, not just in branding, but in day to day, you know, what, what feeling am I trying to put into the world too? Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the intention behind it? Mm -hmm. Like I think of like feng shui, I think says mm -hmm. you can do like reds and more, I don't know. I want to say like romantic, sexier colors and bedrooms, yeah. but it's like, what's your intention? Do you want to viv up the fire or do you want to is viv a word I don't know it's sure same thing, but yeah viv up the fire or, or do you want to do it cool and like resting mm -hmm. I know it's like yeah yeah and I think that's a great way to look at it I'm more on the rest and relax side in the bedroom <laughs> why not <laughs> you know you do spend like eight hours if you got yeah. a good night's sleep doing that so. yeah and I'm in that same I mean well so you kind of have two you've lived two lives like you have older kids right too mm -hmm. and how old are they 21 and 19 yeah and now you're kind of you started over and now you have a four-year-old right yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. so you know um yeah you're in the thick of them waking up at random times or maybe even multiple times throughout the night and then you just got a puppy and so that's yeah that's my life I've got three kids I mean they're oh. a little bit older now but three dogs and the wow. one's still a puppy who likes to bark at random times of the night and day so yeah like rest and relaxation way more important yeah. these days yeah, totally. than, <laughs> yeah. than yeah. fire yeah, yeah. I'm moving and I'm thinking about my bedroom color so maybe I'll message oh, you fine. On <laughs> yes <laughs> I and actually you know I said about not being creative but I love creating spaces with intention mm -hmm. and um our house got destroyed a couple of years ago on basically every room was destroyed by water damage oh, nice. um when I was like 30 weeks pregnant and we were planning a home birth and that was before, you know, of course I thought that was terrible. And then your baby dies and you're like, Oh, that's not a big deal in the scheme of yeah, life. Right. But right. I got to redo basically everything. And it was really fun for me to think about those feelings and what each room meant to me and what I want there. Mm -hmm. And I actually use that when I do, um, you know, like either Sage or Palo Santo or sound clearing of the energy of the house, I clear it out. But then when I come back in, like in the living room, I'll put the intention of play and fun and family togetherness um, in that space. And then in the bathroom, you know, it's cleanliness and um, like, cause that's like 
oh, we have a nice big soaking tub. So kind of detoxing mm-hmm. all of those kinds of thoughts and feelings. And then, you know, different in the bedrooms versus the kitchen, you know, so it is just really mm-hmm. neat to play around with that and pay attention to what does the artwork do? What does the mm-hmm. color do? What does clutter do to your space? So yeah, it all matters. Talk about integrating beauty and creativity mm-hmm. with the brain, how it affects the brain and our mental mm-hmm. health. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's, there you go, is the crossroads of the two hemispheres. And Mm -hmm. I love that. And talk about being an alchemist. You're just like literally transforming and being the creator as well. Yeah. Moving through those spaces. So, And art should be really intentional too. I'm just saying Mm -hmm. like artists, like I try to create high vibrational somewhat, at least, you know, don't put, don't put ugly, scary things in your space, people. (laughs) You know, put things that uplift you and. Yeah, absolutely. And do better you know, and that's something that when, when I was talking about that, everything is basically marketing and we're basically being manipulated. And I know that has a negative connotation, but we are being manipulated at all times by Mm -hmm. branding, but also Mm -hmm. messaging, you know, so there is something to, and I'm some, I, I love Halloween, you know, I like the spooky, creepy stuff, But also I can't go too far with that because it truly does affect my energy. I can feel it in my nervous system. If something freaks me out, you know, Mm -hmm. I feel that so deeply. So we do have to be aware of what we're visually taking in, but what we're taking in through our ears, you know, all of those things do matter. So I love that you are intentionally creating just high vibration pieces for the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's part of, you know, it's the selfish thing too, for me to like transmute, like the energy of the world that I feel like it's just, if I can live in this place of beauty and Mm -hmm. I pray when I paint a lot and just, you know, I get in this flow state. It's like, it's really good for me too. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I really want to get it out there as well. And that's the gift that you bring to the world. You know, when I studied my human design, mine is transforming vibration through words so Mm -hmm. you know you're transforming vibration through colors and art and so we all come in with our certain gifts that we bring to this world so I love that you have honored that since you were a small child like that's freaking Mm -hmm. amazing you know Mm -hmm. because I think so many people get sidetracked or lost in that along the way and get scared and fearful. And that kind of goes right into the visibility piece Mm -hmm. where, you know, you started talking about that, that idea of, well, I have to, if I want to be an artist, I have to make money. Cause I think there's that, like a starving artist Mm -hmm. belief that gets put into a lot of artists and that's not fair. No, that shiz needs to be reprogrammed mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> yeah, it isn't fair it's uh it's toxic it's from it's from other lifetimes of where yeah. artists really were starving like poor mm-hmm. van gogh like didn't i don't think he even sell the piece in his whole life maybe one piece yeah and just didn't believe in himself and he was starving and you know mm-hmm. you know i don't know if he's really starving but yeah, yeah. it's a deeply ingrained thing that needs mm-hmm. to go away and then i think too with our culture right now that's the first thing to go in schools music art because it's seen as extra and it's not it's so necessary for our well-being so I give you a lot of credit for making this your lifelong commitment to be an artist because it's a true gift to the world so yeah thank you thank you and in all honesty I have fallen off the path and Mm -hmm. I have believed that voice where I just can't make any money and I better focus on my, you know, graphic design and websites and all the mm-hmm. other businessy things. And, you know, I've separated them out. So people wouldn't perceive me as an artist, you know, mm-hmm. and all this weird stuff. And now I finally come to a place like I am integrating this and I want to be a professional artist. Just watch me. And yeah, you know, so it's starting to come in even more lately, you know, so it does ebb and flow, but with my belief in myself. So mm-hmm. thank you for seeing it as like more, it's more integrated than I really give it credit for. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, you embody the energy of an artist. And again, that's just how I view the world. I see and feel people's energy. And even if I didn't know you, I would look at you and be like, I would guess that she's an artist. <laughs> so that's <laughs> just the energy. Like anyway. I don't know. I don't know. Like that I couldn't means- say, I couldn't put it into words, but so it's just the energy that I can tell from you that you are just a creative type Mm. of person. Um, 
And so how did you, how have you moved through being willing to be visible? Cause that's kind of uh, what your book's all about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely been a journey and, you know, I say shine brighter with less fear in my tagline, because when someone is highly sensitive or very empathic or introverted and just want to go hang out in their artist cave, and maybe I will eventually, you know, this has been my journey of like, oh, I got to do this entrepreneurial thing and I got to show up and I got to do this and I got to do that. And it's like, this has been this whole journey around uh, belief in myself, being authentic to what I really like doing or don't like doing, you know, pushing through and trying to be like that coach you see over there because they're super rah-rah and extroverted and yelling. Mm -hmm. and, And I'm like, oh, I'm not that person. So it's just this whole gamut of things of like, what am I getting over here? Am I, you know, so it's so much about authenticity. It's about balancing and self-care with, um, okay. Yeah. I did this launch. I did a lot of posts and now I need to like go back into my mm-hmm. cave, you know, yeah. and, like just chill Great out. And, and, mm-hmm. You know, like introverts need to need to resource on their own. And yeah. that doesn't mean in, in the spotlight or <laughs> with mm-hmm. other people, it means truly on their own. So, um, I even forgot your question. I'm all over the place, but I'm really passionate about really finding what's true as being visible. And there's such a journey around for so many of the clients, like over the 20 years, I can't believe it's been 20 years that I've done like graphic design, I've done freelancing. And now it's just been like the last eight years full, you know, full running my own business and working with really creative spiritual entrepreneurs. I'm really blessed to work with amazing people. And the thread has been being terrified of being visible, like so Mm -hmm. many of them, not everyone, but so many of them. And I've had some where it's like the, if I'm visible, I'm going to die, you know, this not to go really intense there, but it's this, you know, this persecution here and it, you know, you work with hypnosis. I don't know what you're Mm -hmm. thinking on past lives and all that is, or just generational trauma, but there's deep, deep stuff that goes way back sometimes. And I experienced it within myself. And so I see that I should send them to you for the, I was just going to say, Hey, now, you know, somebody to work through that stuff. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. I 1000 million percent believe in the past lives, the generational, um, anytime that somebody comes to me with a fear of success or a fear of stepping into their gifts, I'm Mm -hmm. like, there was a time when you stepped into your gifts and you were persecuted for it because I've just seen it so yeah. many times in yeah. so many different ways yeah. um, through so many different sessions that we have these wounds that need love and attention. And once we do that, once mm-hmm. we forgive other people, once we forgive ourselves, mm-hmm. yeah, we can just be our true authentic self. Cause that's what you're talking about. Just knowing yourself to know what you need what your gifts are and then how to share that with the world in a way that doesn't, that builds you up and builds other people up and doesn't destroy you. So exactly. Yeah. Oh, so beautifully said. Um, Oh, I had a thought, but it went. That's okay. So good. Um, And so the fear of success thing for you, you see that a lot. And mm-hmm. uh, I had another question for you. Maybe it'll come back, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So you're helping people through branding move through that fear of persecution, that fear of um, Mm -hmm. being seen, be, you know, putting themselves out there. And that's, yeah, it is just so hard. And I'm a Leo and I still struggle with being seen and putting myself out there because even though I'm a Leo and love the, the limelight and love being the center of attention, I still am very empathic and a deep feeler. So if somebody is annoyed with me, if somebody's pissed off at me, if I feel that and I feel that hard. So, yeah. you know, even though I want to be out there, there's that other side to that, that mm-hmm. I have to just know myself and know that that's a piece of what makes me, me and yeah. honoring that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, such that you're a nurturer caregiver. I mean, that's one of your highest values mm-hmm. that you, you care about when things are off. So how mm-hmm. do you do that on the online space when you, you get the haters and the other, you know, sometimes we yeah. can brush it off, but sometimes it really is affecting us mm-hmm. and we need to recharge. And something you said was like, it it's about 
um, I think when you were talking about the hypnosis piece, it's about having that awareness. Oh my God, I was persecuted in a past life. Like mm-hmm. I have the memory of being an herbalist and like being yep. killed in some horrific way. I don't even know how, but, and I had this gift. And so it was showing my gift of whatever thing that I had. Um, so when you have the awareness first, right, you probably know mm-hmm. all this, <laughs> have that awareness, like you can identify, oh, that's why I feel so scared. Yep. And then you can just give yourself that love. And like you said, the forgiveness, mm-hmm. but you first have to have the awareness. Oh, I feel like I'm going to die if I get visible. It's like, yeah. yeah. And people don't even, some, they, oops, my dog is pushing my ring light. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I not have a disaster in here. Come here, babes. Come here. Come over here. Okay. Sometimes, you know, people are unconscious with this thing. Mm-hmm. Don't bring the awareness. Don't bring it into the light to, sh- you know, shine light on the creepy crawlies. Yeah. You know, it just makes me so sad. Like I feel, and I feel really passionate about like, every, you know, most of us have a dream mm-hmm. and like, let's get it out in this life. Let's express it. Let's yeah. share it with the world in whatever Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Entrepreneur, but yeah. Yeah. And, and that's it too. Yeah. Not everybody's meant to have a business or like be really like, you know, out and proud kind of a deal. But mm-hmm. I was just listening to an, um, this is love podcast and she, her lifelong dream was to be on jeopardy and it took her 20 years and I'm like crying at the end of the episode. Cause she got to be on. And I was like, that because that mattered to her for whatever reason. And for somebody else might be like, oh, that's no big deal. Like who cares? And I'm sure she had people in her life who are like, you're really pouring all of your energy and extra time into this. Mm -hmm. But yet for some reason, it really resonated with her. And Mm -hmm. I love stories like that, where people just love something and they pour their all into it. And whether it's a business or just a hobby or just a passion, I don't think that that matters. I think it just is does this fill my soul and light up my, the passion within me and whatever way that looks like. And I think we don't give enough credit to that, you know, in our very like, um, you know, <laughs> immigrant um, capitalist society is very much like productivity. It has to make money and, you know, you have to, do this for a reason and it's like well sometimes we can just do things because we enjoy them because we love it <laughs> right so yeah it's all back to the like that left like left brain is better logic is better mm-hmm. and even einstein himself said like what is it the quote imagination is more important than knowledge i don't know if that's yeah taken out of something out of context and everyone uses it but yeah. yeah. And I think that's the direction that we're moving into is where we are starting to realize that, um, you know, it, not that capitalism is bad, all bad, but mm-hmm. when we go into capitalism to where we are willing to destroy other people or step on other people for our benefit, for our elevation, that's when I start to have a problem with it, um, you know, kind of like corporate taking out all the small businesses and, you know, those kinds of things, um, not to make this political, (laughs) (laughs) No, I hear you. but but where I'm going with that is I think we are moving into a more expanded consciousness. I see more and more people wanting to get into nature, wanting to meditate, wanting to be more creative and get in that flow state. Like we started out talking about. So I think it takes people like me, like you, who are willing to do these things that get us in that spiritual flow state that then gives other people permission to do those things too. So Mm, love it. Yeah. And we get to create heaven on earth or peace or whatever we want, you know, state. so like, why not all spread that beautiful web of light, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, love it. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you want to share with people? Is there anything else you feel called to talk about today or share about you, your story or your book or your business and how you're helping the world? Oh my goodness. I had this thought and I'm like stuck in what was that thought again? It's talking oh, about okay. deprivation. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, um, a tangible is a tangible way to like get visible. Um and I totally lost it. It's really silly of me. Anyway, so I just hope that everyone listening really picks up that part around the purpose piece, you know, and like mm-hmm. what we're here for and what we what we love to do and, and really allow that to 
for us to give it honor and the love that it deserves, if you will, mm -hmm. I mean, to be, you know, it is that though. And, yeah. um, to give ourselves the really, like the value of stepping into that and just allowing that to come forward. Cause this is, you know, our yeah. one precious life, at least in this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And I always joke that, you know, if we don't get it right, we're going to have to do it again. So yeah, we might yeah, as well exactly. do our very best this time around. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I want to share with people that you have a couple of different ways that people can work with you. So you have mm -hmm. your, your art that you do sell and you have the original prints and then you also do prints of things, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I'm just starting to yeah, starting to redo that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a little nicer quality. Gicle. Yeah, just not yeah. selling twenty dollars prints anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. We need high quality in the world. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And then um, you do collaborate. So that was how I met you was through your collaboration with Sunny Don Johnston with the multi-dimensional deck. So yeah, that's my favorite deck that I use with people all the time. That's so amazing. I love yeah. that. I, it's the and it pulls together. So I do past life and purpose card readings. And it's just like kind of a side piece of my business. And I'll do it at expos or at shops or, you know, events and things. But then I have them pull from that multidimensional deck, which is what I then encourage them to either call upon or use as their meditation point mm -hmm. to manifest all of the things that we talk about and what came out in that reading. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it might be Joan of Arc, but it might be dog or it might be the Ohm symbol, but that gives them that visual, that feeling, that energy to really hone in on, to then work through those relationship issues or those, you know, persecution issues or, you know, whatever it is. So I love using that. Love that. Yeah. Thank oh, you for creating that. Just that. makes me so happy to know that it's like, yeah. In the world. Yeah. <laughs> it lives on. It does. And then yeah. you have your branding. So that is with photos, that's with website, with all of that branding creation. Mm -hmm. And then you do your coaching as mm -hmm. well through that. Um, yeah. What else? What Am I missing anything? Um, I'm starting to do more courses. So I actually have a Holy Hot Visibility course. I'm in the works of getting ready to, I got to figure out the launch date with my move coming up and everything. I'm just moving yeah. like a mile away, but it, you know, I want to make, oh, it takes time. Yeah. Have it really grounded. So I um, have a Holy Hot Visibility course. So that's, that's coaching, but really uh, the book, but really going into the deep, um, the different gateways to, mm -hmm. you know, shine brighter basically. So there's a framework Excellent. in the book and go deeper in the course modules. Yeah. I have a couple other courses and, uh, more coming soon. Um, I'm working on website templates, which is really fun. Yeah. To create archetypal based website templates. That'll be, oh, that's awesome. fun. I know I'm going to be releasing one a year. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And of course I will put all of her information in the show notes and that way you can just click on things and copy <laughs> and go right to things as well. But, um, thank you so much for being on today. This was oh, thank you. such a beautiful conversation really of tying together just colors and feelings and values and just, yeah, creativity, stepping into our power and being visible and putting ourselves into the world in the way that feels good for us. So thank you. Yes. I love the conversation too. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, you take good care and thank you everyone for listening and have a wonderful day.